Welcome to Because. We have a great show planned for you today. First, I'll talk with Boomers representatives as they stop by the studio to discuss the 2014 season. And next, we'll check in with Gene at Tinkerbell's Garden Party, and we'll conclude today's episode with George Gray at the Kite Fly event. Stick around. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, my name is Cindy Pfeiffer, and this is Jessica and Kyle, and we take time for fun at the Schomburg Park District. Today we're at the Spring Valley Heritage Farm, and we enjoy uh, camps here as well. We're going to do uh, some rock camps this summer, and also uh, Jessica swims at the Barracudas, and Kyle even goes to preschool at the Park District. So we really enjoy the Schomburg Park District. Thank you. WSPD, your place to take time for fun. Celebrate the first day of summer with an evening of Illinois wines and brews on the prairie. The Schaumburg Park Foundation Solstice Hop and Vine Fest is Saturday, June 21st at the Spring Valley Nature Center. Bring your friends and make a few new ones while you enjoy fine wine, hors d'oeuvres, live music, and nature walks. Proceeds benefit the Schaumburg Park District Scholarship Program helping families who may not otherwise have the financial ability to participate in Park District events. Tickets are available for $30 through PayPal at SchaumburgParkFoundation.org. Parking is free. The Solstice Hop and Vine Fest, a great way to kick off a great summer. We are back here on Because. I'd like to welcome Jeff Nay, Vice President of the Schomburg Boomers. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thanks, Thanks for John. stopping in Because. Well, let's talk about uh, the third season for the Boomers in 2014 championship season. Yep. How can we get we, any better than that? Let, we a we set the us. bar uh, a little high for ourselves. Right. Uh, won ourselves a league championship in, uh, in just our second year of existence. Uh, it's a great start that we're uh, excited to try and build on. That's great. What uh, up and coming new for the stadium this year? Anything? A little bit, yeah. Some new players. Uh, uh, minor league baseball. The the faces are always changing. Right. So uh, some new guys in the mix. Jamie Bennett, our manager, is back, Great. and uh, he's uh, trying to fill some gaps from a few guys we lost to uh, big league affiliates and stuff. And then uh, entertainment wise, which is a big part of the mix for sure. us, uh, more firework shows than ever before. Uh, a couple new uh, uh, promotions and. and gimmicks, I guess, uh, for the coming season. We're pretty excited to uh, get out there. Yeah, the f if I read right, the, f the fireworks are going to be every Friday and Saturday and then some other uh, special dates as well. Correct, yeah. Yeah, every Friday and Saturday night all summer long, uh, Thursday night to uh, end the regular season throughout the Independence Day weekend, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I think. So 19 shows in all. That's awesome. Yeah. Very, very good. Yeah, and Independence Day, is there four days in a row that with the... Uh, I think three. Three, three. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. I knew third it was, falls on a Thursday, yeah, that's I right. think. So. That, that's fantastic, though. And uh, you mentioned the coaching staff already. Any great yep. rookies, prospects that are coming in, name wise? Uh, a little soon to tell yet with the rookies. Okay. Uh, some new faces and a couple of uh, fellow from the White Sox uh, system uh, who's joined us this year. Uh, Cal Bowling and then uh, uh, Ray Rodriguez, who was a All-American for Robert Morris University. Oh, very so, close. Uh, That's nice and close by. Yeah, a couple new guys from the area. Danny Jimenez is back with the team, uh, St. Charles native uh, pitcher. So uh, some familiar faces, some new ones mixed in, and sure. hopefully uh, the, the right combination to uh, keep yeah. the hard work. Yeah, tell us a little bit. I mean, last year, recap it for us. I mean, for yeah. those people that don't know. Yeah, last season we led uh, pretty much wire to wire. Uh, Jamie put a great team together, and uh, we led the... the the standings uh, almost uh, the full season. Uh, playoffs came along and we uh, we swept our way through uh, two rounds. Uh, six and zero didn't lose a game and, and won ourselves the Frontier League you, Cup. You can't beat that in any playoff in any sporting uh -huh. event to sweep your way through yeah. and, and a walk off win and everything. <laughs> uh, a lot of excitement. Fantastic. It was uh, it was a lot of fun to see. And besides being the championship team, you guys were also honored in a couple other ways. I think with the yeah. uh, organization. Yeah, appreciate that. Uh, we won organization of the year honors. We we call it the front office championship. Right. We're uh, recognized for our operations, marketing, and sales efforts. So uh, that's the one that. Uh, uh, Feather in the cap for the staff. Sure, as to the no, that's important. Field. Yeah, you get you get the the frontline players, but then you also have the back office staff. You guys right. do a lot of hard work with all the marketing and different promotions. Yep. I think, you know, the Boomers are really known for the the innovative ideas and different things coming up. And I know that's you, the you, idea. You, you you mentioned uh, 
some of the upcoming events this year and some of the promotions. Is there, did I read right? Is there a zombie event of There some is, sort? yep. Uh, for one night, we will rename ourselves the Schomburg Zombies. <laughs> uh, face makeup and the whole uh, Walking Dead uh, type of theme. Right, right. Uh, throughout the game, a new uniform and uh, opportunity for fans to buy those uniforms after the game. Oh, and that's that very cool. Zombie associated circuses. Yeah, hey, hey, that zombie, uh, that's an in trend right yeah. now. So you guys yeah, pick, really pick right is. up so, on uh, it. Riding that wave a little bit and uh, We'll see. Uh, we'll see what comes of it. That's cool. Any other uh, cool promotional nights? That yeah, you want to mention? yeah. I'm uh, I'm excited. Uh, a new one we're trying uh, here end of May is uh, 21 and over night. Oh right, I heard that a couple to, different uh, places. Close the park to minors. It's a school night, so hopefully no uh, big deal there. Right. Um, 8 p.m. game and uh, a date night type of theme. We'll have uh, more mature entertainment. Uh, right. Some dancing girls, a dancing guy or two, perhaps. <laughs> uh, music and uh, video and so on uh, for uh, an adult audience. So that's a new one we're pretty excited about. We're bringing back the uh, world's largest squirt gun fight. Oh, the, that's uh, a very popular one, right? That's right. been a uh, big hit so far. Great. And it'll be our second annual uh, marshmallow fight as well. Awesome. Uh, we've got campfire marshmallows from uh, right in the neighborhood here on board to uh, help make that go. And uh, that was uh, just hilarious fun uh, yeah, last that, year. Those so are good promotional ones. Again. You can't beat fun with uh, whether it be squirt guns or yep. marshmallows. How can you go wrong with either exactly. of those two? Exactly. Both get the fans involved. <laughs> that's a big part of the theme for us is you don't just sit there and watch a boomers game. You get involved right. and then participate. And right. that's, uh, that's what makes it fun. And you guys have done a great job, I think, uh, you know, in being the third year, just really getting ingrained in the community. And I noticed this year you picked up a, uh, a presenting sponsor, which yeah. is a good community yeah. bank. Yeah. Wintrust Community Bank's uh, a sponsor from day one with us has uh, uh, built their presence a little bit uh, uh, further at the ballpark. And they'll be our presenting sponsor for uh, the next five seasons. That's great. You know, yeah. they really do stand by the Wind Trust name and, and get invested in the community. It's nice that they're getting yeah. invested in our community baseball mm -hmm. team as well. It's a great match for us. They have that community mind, uh, as do we. It's right. uh, Schaumburg and, and surrounding areas type of theme. And uh, to, to reach grassroots style into the community uh, firsthand as they do is uh, a terrific, uh, terrific match for us. Right. And for those people who haven't been out to the stadium, you know, how do you go about getting tickets, you know, yeah. single game tickets, parties, things like that, if you want to recap yeah. some of the basics for tickets us? Tickets start at uh, 7 to $10 a piece, so real affordable for a mm -hmm. family to come out. We sell them uh, by phone at the stadium, in person, of course, at the stadium. Uh, online, uh, by mail, by fax. Uh, right. Send us a smoke signal if you need to, and <laughs> we'll figure it out and get you some tickets. Fantastic. And I, I think Levy's provides the yeah. food, and they're they're a, you know available to do group events as well. I know yep. you guys have a couple different spots, whether it be the right. there's a picnic area, and then off the left field is a special yeah. area picnic as well. Picnic tents, the Miller Lite party deck, the Schomburg Club, all uh, different hospitality spaces for a company outing, a church group, a little league team. Uh, the, the neighborhood block party. Uh, Levy Restaurants caters it all for us. They're uh, same folks who work uh, Wrigley Field and Comiskey Park. So top-notch catering and uh, hopefully a good show and uh, a boomer's win to round yeah, off a night. Right. And it's nice the flexibility too. You have the Schomburg Club where somebody wants to do something a little more formal as far as meeting space goes. You have that available, but for the typical kind of group picnic area, the left field line right. and the, the Miller Party deck are Yeah, are when the weather's right, uh, we've all been cooped up for the winter and uh, <laughs> got a little cabin <laughs> fever going. So if Mother Nature cooperates, it's a chance to get outside and enjoy some good weather. And uh, the right. Schomburg Club is uh, a little dressier and a, a nice fallback with air conditioning right. and, uh, and shelter if needed. Yeah. So uh, ready for anything in Chicagoland. Speaking of being cooped up, how, how is our good friend Coop doing? Coop is doing great. Uh, busy on the, uh, the entertainment circuit, uh, making the rounds of uh, the community events and so on. And uh, visiting some schools with our school reading program and such. So awesome. uh, he's uh, a busy bird. Yeah, great. Jeff, anything else that you want to mention before we conclude? Uh, those are, uh, I think, great highlights. Looking forward to another great season. Want to see all of Schaumburg out uh, cheering for the team and uh, having a good time at the ballpark. And the web website's simple enough to find. For yep. those that boomersbaseball.com. Boomersbaseball.com. Uh, you can't go, can't go more simple than that. So. Exactly. Well, Jeff, thanks for coming out today. I appreciate well, yeah. you stopping by the Because thanks, Studio. We'll be right back after these messages. No need to go away to summer camp. The Schaumburg Park District has everything a kid could want right here at home. Whether it's soccer or ceramics, fashion or fossils, cartooning or cooking, if you want to learn it, we're here to teach it. And make sure you have more fun than you've ever had before. Can you believe the Schaumburg Park District has more than 100 different summer camp programs to choose? Nothing wrong with those camps where you're singing Kumbaya by the fire, but we've got so much more. Summer camp at the Schaumburg Park District. Learn more and sign up online at parkfun.com. Don't miss the fun.
this is Jean and tonight we're over at the CRC for Tinkerbell's Garden Party with Sherry Page and Cindy Lakowski. We hope you enjoy having some very good fun tonight. Here we go, all the scary. Come on over. Come on over, you're doing excellent. Sippity, fabity, boo. We're turning you into fairies too. And all it takes, what do you think's in here? Is faith, hope, trust, and a little bit of pixie dust. Ooh. So it's very small. Where do they live? In Pixie Hollow. In Pixie Hollow. How do you get there? Fly. Fly. Can you say that one more time? The you have to follow the second star up in the sky and go where? To the morning. Right. morning. Very good. So we're Hi, this is Sherry Page, who is our instructor for Tinkerbell's Garden Party and many of our other one night special classes here at the Community Resource Center. Sherry, how do you come up with these great ideas? It's a lot of fun. We um, explore ideas with the kids, we find out what their favorite characters are, and we expand on the ideas through class time, discussions, and then you'll see a magical new world. Today we're gonna do Tinkerbell, and we're gonna talk about Rosetta, and Rosetta is the fairy of gardening, and Tinkerbell likes to tinker, so she's good at fixing and building and exploring things. So we're going to help the kids play in the pretend garden, and then come over and actually make their own little Tinkerbell garden. With lots of love and nurture, they will produce beautiful flowers. In the meantime, they have a gem flower to help them wait and grow for it. Very good. And how long have you been teaching classes for the Park District? About seven years now. I've worked for the Park District almost nine. I worked down in the daycare nursery play spot um, in the CRC. And what is the most exciting thing you have done classes wise your favorite class um, I love coming up with my own classes and just being able to explore different worlds um, every class is different you get to meet new friends new children and it's even great when you know they had a great time and they come back and enjoy another new class this is the first time we are exploring Tinkerbell so if this is a success maybe Tinkerbell will have a winter wonderland as well and I know you have some new classes coming up in the fall, some other one-time nights. What are some of those classes? Um, parents can look forward to, as well as the children, uh, Lilo's Luau. We will be doing a Hawaiian activity day. We will be doing Ariel Under the Sea, lots of water play fun with Flounder and Sebastian. We also have Once Upon a Princess, um, introducing the kids to the world of Sophia the First. And we will do hair and makeup. And we have one last one, Princess and Ponies. Great, we look forward to them, and thank you very much for all that you do. Thank you very much. You have a magical flower. Okay. Um, you know what we're gonna do, the dirt is last, the dirt and the seeds are last. First we're gonna put stickers on, then we're gonna put the pixie dust, and then the dirt. At the very end. Excuse me, what is your name? Claire. Claire? And are you a fairy tonight? Yeah, Rosetta. How did you become a fairy? Um, with pixie dust. With pixie dust? There was pixie dust here at the CRC? Yeah. Wow, and what is, you said you're Rosetta? Yeah. Is she your favorite fairy? Yeah. What is her specialty? Making a garden. Making a garden, and what are you doing now? Making a garden. Oh, how fun. Are you having fun? I'm having a lot of fun. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Look at these. These are a little fancy. You want to take one of these? Here, look at this. You want to try some of these too? Absolutely. What is your name? Maya. Maya. And what are you making, Maya? Oh, a crown. A crown. What, what is on your crown? Flowers. Flowers. And can you tell me, if you were a fairy, how you would get to Pixie Hollow? Second, uh, second start of the right and straight till morning. Wow. And what makes the pix what would help you fly? Pixie dust. Pixie dust. How awesome. Are you having fun tonight? Uh -huh. What is your favorite fairy? Oh, well, Tinkerbell. 
Tinkerbell. She is, is that why you were dressed in green like Tinkerbell? Yeah. Very pretty. Thank you. Bye. What is your name? Haley. Haley? And what, what fairy do you have on today? Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell, is she your favorite fairy? And where does she live? Um, in Pixie Hollow. In Pixie Hollow. Do you, can you walk to Pixie Hollow? Yes. Yes? Would you like to visit it someday? Very cool. What are you making today, Haley? Um, is that a fairy garden? Very cute. And what do you have decorated on there? A bird. A bird. Do you think Tinkerbell likes birds? Probably. Are you having fun tonight? What is your favorite thing you've done so far? Making the, Making the garden. All right, thank you. Can you say goodbye? Bye. What's your name? Katie. Katie, and who is your favorite um, fairy? Um, Periwinkle. Periwinkle? What is her specialty? Um, she's a winter fairy. A winter fairy? Wow, is she in a movie? Um, or is she on a TV show? Um, I think she's in a movie. She's in a movie, so she's a very famous I mean, fairy. I know what movie she is in. Which one? The Secret of the Wings. The Secret of the Wings. Is that a good movie? I haven't seen it. Should I go watch it? All right. What are you making? Um, Tinkerbell. What is this? Um, a wand. A wand. Do all the fairies have wands? No? Does Periwinkle have a wand? Um, no. No? Does Tinkerbell have a wand? No. It looks like it. What is she holding right there? That's a wand, but she doesn't normally have a wand. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now me, please. What's your name? Isabella. Isabella. What is your favorite fairy? The other frosty fairy. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you watch fairy movies a lot? Yes. And um, even Secret of the Wings. The Secret of the Wings. And 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 in Secret of the Wings, Tinker Bell's wings break. Oh and, no! And the uh, and and the snow. It, they break in the snow. Yeah. Did did Tinkerbell get her wings fixed? Yeah. Oh, By good. doing the things that they love to do in the frosty castle. In the frosty castle? Mm -hmm. Wow! What are the things that Tinkerbell loves to do? Tinker. Tinker. Do you like to tinker? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. I tinker, tinker, tinker. Did you get some pixie dust on you today? And that made you fly? Yes. Wow. All right, thank you. Thanks for joining us tonight. This is Jean, and we enjoyed having you here at Because TV. May all your days be pixie days. Have a magical day. This is George Gray reporting from the Bach Neighborhood Center where today is kite fly and family picnic. We're going to go into the room right now, talk to some participants, some volunteers, and go outside and see how these kites fly. 
Let's go check it out right now. All right, I'm here speaking with master kite builder and Schaumburg Park District volunteer, Rich Kurzinski. Rich, first off, let me tell you how handsome that orange new volunteer shirt looks on you. Uh, very, very nice. Tell me what you think of the volunteer shirt. I think the shirt is very nice. It has nice orange with a little bit of gray shading through it. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a heathered orange. Now, now you've been now you've been building kites for quite a while, doing what's right and setting the style. What? Tell me, what is? What are the keys to successfully building a kite and making sure that it gets out there and uh, flies successfully? Well, I think first drawing on it is the most important part. <laughs> yeah, you got to have a nice decoration on there. We got a few different options this year. You can decorate your own kite, and for those not feeling so artistic, there was a cool tie dye kite and a cool uh, patriotic USA kite. Uh, which ones are flying the best? Uh, the ones that we're adding tails to. <laughs> All right, got to throw a little tail on that kite well, because the wind's not not as strong today, so the tail helps stabilize the kite a little better. Yeah, we've had a mixed bag of weather for this event in the past. We had, I think, a monsoon one year, no wind the other year, a sandstorm uh, last year. So this year, it's the calm before the storm. I think we got some nasty weather coming our way, so we got to get those kites up yeah, we'll pronto. Probably, probably get the wind just as the rain starts showing up. <laughs> um, but, you know, is, is the kite building process difficult? Are the kites we provide good for, I mean, good for kite flying? Oh, yeah. No, in fact, I think this year's kites are very nice because, like you said, people that aren't artistic and inclined, they can go ahead and take a tie guy one or a, a, flat, a Patriot flag one, and they pretty much pop together. So it's a matter of tying a couple yeah. strings together. Yeah, they pop together real quick, and then uh, it's quick to get up and get, get that gratification of getting that kite up in the air and chasing it around and... Uh, just a matter of keeping them away from the trees. And uh, other than that, it's a good time. So, Rich, thank you for helping us out again this year. You're always a smiling face to be here to, to help out with uh, these guys. And you have, as we said, turned into our resident kite building uh, expert. So we thank you for your expertise in this department. No problem. I enjoy it. All right. Thank you, Rich. Okay. Mr. Patel is concentrating hard. He's trying to get that kite up. He's got the tie-dye kite up in the air. How's it going, Mr. Patel? Not too bad. It's going. All right. It's how, is, it, is this difficult? Not so. Not that. How, how did you learn all of your kite flying? Too long! Stick keep it up! Come on! Oh. <laughs> how did you learn how to fly a kite, Mr. Patel? Um, I used to fly it back in India. Back in India? Is it kite flying a lot more popular in India than yeah. it is? In Gujarat, yes. It is popular. Uh, is that where they do like the kite like kite fighting and all that where you get the kites up in the air and there's like two kites and they kind of do like a yeah. dog fight? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Very cool. Uh, and tell me, do the kids uh, enjoy flying kites? Oh yeah, it's a big thing back in India. Yeah, is it, and uh, have the kids kind of your have your kids that are here today? Well, all right, they're, we're ready to go. And they're try they're trying to get it back up. Are they enjoying it so far? Yes, they are. Well, we appreciate you coming. I know you are a fixture at a lot of our family events. We sure do appreciate you coming and You're supporting welcome. the park district, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much. Go. Wait, 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 wait. So 
So I am no kite flying expert by any means, but it is a fun event and it's cool. We've got a lot of families outside Bach Park right now that, that participate in the event. We also have some families here just out to fly a kite and be part of the fun day um, with their own personal kites and just trying to kind of get an idea of what, what makes for successful kite flying. I think it's just being patient and uh, you know, making sure that you uh, just give yourself a little slack and just being patient to get that kite uh, up there in the air uh, inch by inch. We got a nice little breeze today, nothing too crazy. So um, a good day for kite flying for uh, this year's kite fly and family picnic. And hopefully uh, the rain stays away for a little bit longer so uh, everybody can enjoy uh, building and flying their kite. This is George Gray reporting from the Bach Neighborhood Center for Because TV. Have a great day. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to take time for fun.